Hi, this is the French Tech News. We're in Dole, France at the Insect Factory uh, with CEO Antoine Hubert uh, to get a little tour and a little explanation of the really technical marvel uh, that you've created over the last six years in solving the numerous engineering problems, which I think I didn't appreciate until mm -hmm. this door. We have in the backdrop mm -hmm. this incredible Lego recreation of the factory. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for joining yeah. us. Thank you for coming. Um, so very briefly, um, let's just start with your most recent news. Mm -hmm. You just announced a, a big acquisition in the US. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about that? Yes, it's an important news for us because it's the, really going into the U.S. in the core, I would say, of the ag uh, part of the U.S., the Midwest. Uh, Jord uh, is joining our family. Uh, is a woman founder of a business. Cheryl has founded it a couple of years ago. I met her and her network some time ago when I was visiting the Midwest because we knew that in the world, Midwest was one of the best areas to locate an insect farm due to the vast availability of different raw materials coming from the wheat processing grains, uh, the corn processing grain, etc., and the proximity also to pet food companies in Canada of uh, large salmon farms. So we knew it for, a year for so sometimes, and after the fundraising last year, uh, no, two years ago, we did the acquisition of uh, Protifarm in Netherlands, and we were also scooting for further opportunities and many opportunities. And we found in the, the most interesting geographies, uh, and uh, for us, uh, George was taking all the boxes, and uh, uh, they will be now helping us uh, but to grow and build, at some point, a very big farm, like the big one we are now uh, uh, building in Amiens, North of France. So if we look at insect today mm. uh, and this facility in particular, mm. can you just describe a little bit about what it is you process or you grow here mm. and, and then maybe talk a little bit about where the company will go from here? Yeah. So here we are in one of our vertical farms. So it's uh, in Dole in Burgundy in France. And all our farms are designed in a similar way. Uh, you have an insect farm, it's a vertical farm. As you, you know, it's growing in the U.S. like uh, companies doing leafy greens and tomatoes and strawberries in vertical way. It's, it's a very similar business, but we don't grow these leafy greens. We grow proteins and fats and fertilizer in a vertical way under an insect form that are eventually in a second part, which is different from the other vertical farm, a specific what we call a, a food processing part, which is really similar to how we process the soybeans or oil or canola grains, etc. And, and there you get the final ingredients, so the protein meals, uh, the, uh, the fat fractions, but also the fertilizer under a pellet uh, form. So it's how we operate here. We have a similar size, so in Netherlands, following the acquisition of Protifarm last year. And now we have a smaller one in the Midwest with Jord. So that's the three sites we, have been, uh, we are operating. And we are at the end of the construction of a very big one, the flagship plant in Namien, north of France. And we have now further pro also projects of similar size of Amiens in the world. And by the end of the decade, 2030, we are aiming to have about 15, 17 sites uh, fully in operations and uh, be delivering more than 1 billion revenues. And I think uh, we've spoken before, but I think until visiting and getting the tour here, I didn't appreciate the scope of the engineering mm -hmm. challenges that you've solved, but it sounds like now you're very comfortable that you've you've figured those out and you're really ready to scale the company over the next decade. Yes, yes, it is. We learned so much. It's 10 years of combined knowledge between here in France and in Netherlands of real operating this kind of site, which, which are the two of the biggest mealworm farm in the world already. And, and our technology is the cross of, the, of three, I would say, pillars, uh, uh, equipments, hardware, machines, so really deep engineering. Also data, of course, because we, it's, it's a lot to follow and to track. And in an indoor farm, indoor farm, it's very perfect to get all the data and understand how you grow. And the third is, of course, the biology knowledge, understanding the, 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 how the insects are growing, what they need to grow properly in terms of feed and uh, nutrition. Uh, we have also announced a few weeks ago new development in genetics also programs following the full sequencing of the genome of our species. So that's really the cross of biology plus hardware and software together, which is pretty unique in what we do. And we learn a lot from, from, from the ground in the shop floor there, uh, because there's some equipment when we started, we are not working as we, uh, we were expecting. 
because we had also a small team, so we didn't get all the knowledge, uh, as we are almost to the 300 people with very far, we we'll say, knowledge in the food industries, in the energy industries, you know, in really big manufacturing businesses. Mm -hmm. This is how also we have uh, developed this uh, unique knowledge and the 350 patents we have that are covering 80% of the GDP today in the world. Wow. Mm. It's amazing. Mm. Well, the other part I don't think that I fully understood before today was in the future, potentially, your licensing model. Yeah. That for all this that you're focused on uh, animal feed, human feed in the mm. near future. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, this whole uh, system that you've created is, is mm. potentially one day a platform it's that a could be much, much bigger. Much, much bigger. We have today, we assessed with BCG and Arthur the Little uh, uh, advisory teams. Um, it's about 25 billion opportunity, target addressable market for mealworms specifically, the insect we farm. Um, and these mealworms, uh, we can grow them everywhere. It's about 100 farms as big as Amia that we could deploy in the world. We know what we do is a good answer to climate and biodiversity uh, collapse. It's 200 times less greenhouse gas emission than beef, 20 times less than poultry. It's, uh, it's uh, reducing a lot deforestation when you use soy or overfishing when you use fish meal to feed uh, salmons or poultry. So it's a real answer. It's one answer. It's not the only one. But the issues are in the next two decades. We know all the scientists are warning we are going to tipping points. So if we want to go fast and make an impact and, and deploy faster, licensing model will be a, a very good way. So we are operating today alone. We are already having dozens of discussions and uh, commitments with big corporates for joint ventures that will come not so far uh, on the way. And from joint venture also will go eventually into licensing model. And I remember I said about these three pillars, uh, hardware, software, and biology. So in this licensing model, the software and the biology will be the critical, we'll say, components of this knowledge. Plus on top, we built a university now. We, we created a university in Amiens. Now it's, it started in the Netherlands. So to train not only the next generation of our people, but the, the next people in, for the JV partner and licensing partner. And we are also the brand. Is everything is our, in our Y and two dots. It's, it's, we are a B2B company, but it's also a, a strong brand to attract talents and also customers. And all the research we do to prove the benefits of our products it's also something we will bring to our licensing partners for them to get access to uh, key customers in the world. So maybe one last area to, to talk about. Um, obviously, what you're describing, we can see the business now becoming much bigger and more mm. complex, many more pieces mm. for you to manage. Uh, what do you see over the next year or two as being the biggest challenge? Is it, is it just continuing to really um, scale that operations? Mm. Is it competition? Is it regulation? What, what do you see as being the the big hurdles you have to face? I think um, regulatory now in Europe is fully open. Um, it's the largest market in the world in food and ag, so we are really big up there. We need to go for new regulatory framework in the US. It's, it's uh, in progress, but it's not as tricky as we were in Europe, and we have all the knowledge and all the experience of what has been done and all the technical dossiers also that are submitting in other parts of the world. So we don't see this as the major, we'll say, bottleneck for further growth. Uh, I thought the main bottlenecks are uh, limitation to the model is similar to many startups. It's uh, uh, um, human capital and financial capital at some point. Are we able to grow uh, fast enough uh, uh, and training the people? This is why we build this university also, to, to grow and, be, and get people onboarded. Every new insector in joining the team spent nine days, whatever, if they are managers in finance, legal, uh, purchasing on operators, they spend nine days minimum till uh, about one month of uh, training. So it's something also to, to, to be ready and to be able to build and get further capacities. We, we are now, we have 150 million contracted revenue and 850 million in the pipeline at different stage of negotiations. The site of Amiens with the 150 is already fully booked for two or three years wow. before it started. Yeah. So this is why we are now working on further sites, and, uh, and so we will need new, more people, more financing for this. So it's also how the challenge is how you adjust the timeline between customer expectations uh, and how fast you can deliver them. Great. Well, thank you so much. Again, thank, it's been amazing to actually get a chance to see this in person, mm. the physical operation here, and thank you so much for hosting us. Thanks for coming. You're okay. welcome. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for joining us on the French Tech News. I'm your host, Chris O'Brien, with my co-host, Ethan Pierce, and we'll be back soon.